We're glad to see everyone this morning. We want to say welcome to the house of God and welcome to our morning devotional service. I'm sure we appreciate um, God's presence one more time in our midst. And we also appreciate the preludes by the choir and orchestra. The orchestra got us to a great start by playing Heavenly Sunlight. And we just had that beautiful rendition of All Hail King Jesus by the choir. We're going to continue singing together by singing from CGS number 1717. Through all the changing scenes of life. We'll sing verse 1, 2, and 3, and we'll have some more songs while um, Sister Anna leads the singing. Attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. We'll sing verses one, two, and three after the interview. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
SSNS 647. SSNS 647. Oh, what fellowship, oh, what joy is mine, resting in the everlasting arms. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 after the interview. SSNS 647. Tis the grandest theme through the ages rung. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest theme that the world ever sung. Our God is able to deliver thee. We'll sing verses 1 and 2 sitting, and verse 3 we'll sing standing after, which will be led in prayer.
to God in prayer. Sister Miriam will lead us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before you. Amen. You are able to deliver. Yes. We are coming with our souls. Hungry, thirsty, dirty, but Father God, we know you are able to deliver. Yes. Hear our prayers today, Father God, and answer each and every prayer, Heavenly Father. Save souls, sanctify, baptize with the Holy Spirit, Father God. Heal those that are sick. Meet us at our point of need, Heavenly Father. You know each and every need of our hearts, Heavenly Father, but we have come. And we know the Holy Spirit is here. Yes. Let it come down, Heavenly Father. Amen. Come down, Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless us all, Heavenly Amen. Father. Amen. Don't let us, Father God, go back the same way we came in. Amen. We want to go home rejoicing, Amen. praising you, giving you glory, Amen. giving you honor. Amen. Because it all belongs to you, Heavenly Father. Father God, we pray for the man that will preach. We don't want to see him, Father God, but to hear your voice speak through him. Father God, speak to each and every heart. We thank you, praying, believing in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. is taken from Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 25 to the end. 
verses 25 to 31. Ezekiel chapter 34, I'm reading from verse 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, Amen. and will cause the evil beasts to cease Amen. out of the land, Amen. and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness Amen. and sleep in the woods. Amen. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing, Amen. and I will cause the shower to come down in a season. Amen. There shall be showers of blessing. Amen. 27. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, Amen. and the earth shall yield her increase, Amen. and they shall be safe in their land, Amen. and shall know that I am the Lord Amen. when I have broken the bounds of their yoke and deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Amen. 28. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, Amen. neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, Amen. but they shall dwell safely, Amen. and none shall make them afraid. Amen. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, Amen. and they shall be no more consumed Amen. with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. Amen. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, Amen. and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, Amen. said the Lord God. Amen. 31 on the last. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men, and I am your God, said the Lord God. Amen. Deuteronomy 31, Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31, I'd like to read verse 6 and verse 8. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of a courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God it is that God go with thee. Amen. He will not fail thee, Amen. nor forsake thee. Amen. Verse 8. And the Lord, he, it is that God go before thee. Amen. He will be with thee. Amen. He will not fail thee. Amen. Neither forsake thee. Amen. Fear not. Amen. Neither be dismayed. 
this few moments before us, we want to discuss briefly on the subject, God cannot fail. Amen. God cannot fail. Amen. And in the process of this, we cover when God promised people that he will not fail. Amen. When has that happened in the Bible? And has God failed? There are many locations in the Bible that God promised people and he did not fail them. Imagine the passage you just read now, verses 6 and 8. God repeating himself. What the people not hearing? He said it in verse 6. And he said it again in verse 8. Be not dismayed. Dismay, and do not be afraid. Because God cannot fail. He said, I will not fail thee. I will not fail you. We will cover also why God promised people. Why do God promise people and he doesn't fail? Because people go through different situations in life. Diverse problem. You know, God is the author and the finisher of the entire universe. So before he created it, God knows what's going to happen. And before we were born, God knows what we are going to go through. And to give us a rest of mind, to be assured that he's with us. Ever before we started, he gave us his word. I will be with thee. Amen. And he said it twice. For the Lord will not fail thee. Amen. Also we'll see how does God promise. How does God, God promise people and it doesn't fail. He promised people when he knows they are going through a situation unpalatable situation, disappointment, embarrassment, reproaches. When that happens, for children of God, then God promised them that he will not fail them. Amen. Imagine when parents have children. No matter how difficult is that child, no matter stubborn, the parent will still love that child. They say that, it is said that, no matter how difficult is a child, you cannot give that child to the lion, to destroy, to devour. You will still pray for that child. You will still wish that child good. You will still do everything within your power that it should be better. If a human being can do that, how much more God? He created everyone. Either we are obedient to him or not. He will still look after us. It will still care for us. We will also cover what happens when God promised people. God stand by his word. It may not go as straight, as easy as, oh, God has promised me now, but God will not fail. Amen. And to make that easy and direct for us, so that it can be implanted or embedded in our heart, we will use David as our object lesson from our current lesson, how God promised him. If you bring your mind back about David, he was just a shepherd, isn't it? And where was he doing his concert? In the field. Who are his uh, concert attendants? Sheep. Can you imagine that? His own position, wherever he found himself, he's happy, praising the Lord. He does not even mind that his own congregation were not human beings. They were animal. Every time he's playing his harp and he's praising the Lord. See how many songs of Psalms that David wrote. In that time, when he had no human congregation. And even when the enemy, in this case, animal, the bigger one, the violent one, the weird one, we want to destroy one of them. Somebody said, well, if it is me, and I have 100 sheep, and then lion want to destroy one, I'll just say, ah, at least, don't kill me. That one can do sacrifice. But, la but David, no, is looking after, let's say, 100 sheep. He will not let any of them to be destroyed, either by lion or by beard or by any animal. He put his life down. How much more, God? Jesus put his life down. So that the lion, the devil cannot destroy you. So that the beard of this world cannot destroy you. 
So, bear it in your mind. God cannot fail. Amen. Let us bring it home. Some of us need to, need to read again some of the tracts to bring our memory back. You know, God promised that he would save our soul. And many of you in this gathering, you are a witness to that. That God can save. Yes. You know, when I was young, my own problem is fighting. I like to use my wrist. Anybody, anywhere, either big or tall, I just give them. I can't handle, I can't control my hand. You get closer to me, I've already punched you. But when God saved my soul, you know what happened? My hands go to the pocket. So I can't punch anymore. If I thought that thing was to come at all, there is no hand there to, there's no wrist, no fist for me to punch. It is a power, evident power of God that he saves. That he promised, isn't he? He said he, he will save us. And he has saved some of us who have already given his life to him or her life to him. So it is true that God doesn't fail his promises. Furthermore, he said that he will sanctify. In Hebrew 13, 12, he said that he, Jesus Christ, might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffer without the gate. Hebrews 13, verse 12. To the extent that Jesus has to suffer to make sure you are sanctified. Because God has promised it that he will sanctify us. And some of you here, some of us here, can bear that witness that God has promised. And in our life, he has kept that promise. He has not failed us. And he has sanctified our soul. That is why we can sit that calmly. That is why we can be listening to this old-fashioned music. That's why we are not jumping up and down. Because we have the spirit of unity. That is why we love the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is why we love the old-fashioned Bible. That is why we like to pray after our services. Because the sanctification brings us together. Because God promised that. And as he failed, no. So if you are a young person, or older person, and you have not been saved, or you are saved, you have not been sanctified, you are missing out from the promises of God. When once God has spoken, he will surely bring it to pass. He has said he will save and I said it will sanctify. So what are you waiting for? Why are you not saved? Why are you not sanctified? At the beginning of this new year, 2020, our dear Brysik said, the Lord has set before you an open door. Yes. Listen to that very well. The elder says, it's only the child that opened their hands that the parent carry. The door is open. You need to go in there. If you don't go into that door, it will remain open. And people will go through that door, they will get their blessing. Amen. They will be saved and sanctified and be baptized with the Holy Spirit and be ordained and be anointed by God and be appointed and be blessed and succeed. Don't see them there. Go to that door that is open. It is God who said, I said before you an open door. You need an action. Walk to that door. Amen. Claim your blessing. That's what the Bible is all about. God will speak. You have to act. Don't just sit down there. Also, he promised us that he will fill us with his own Holy Spirit. The baptism of Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts chapter 2, 39, the promise was to them and to their children and to all who were afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's Acts of Apostles 2, 2, 39. The promise is for those people in the past. It is for the people in the present, and it's for the people in the future. The promise is for all of us yes. to be filled with Holy Spirit. Come on, brethren. If you are sitting here and you've not received the baptism of Holy Spirit, you are wasting the promise of God. You are wasting the resources of God. You are wasting the determination that God wants you to come back to him when you finish your journey on earth. You could dress so well. You could speak so well, brother, sister. If you are not saved, you are not one of us. If you are not sanctified, you are not one of us. You are trying. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are a stranger. Take it seriously. These are the blessings of God. Make yourself a family of God. Get all the promises that God has given unto you. So that 
When the trouble comes, you will stand. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, if you read it all through, but from verse 17, you see God promising uh, Abraham. Verse 17, he said, that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, etc., etc., etc. This is God promising. But at that time, was there any child for Abraham and Sarah? No. You see how and why God gives promises. When it is tough, when it is hard, when it is difficult, when it looks impossible, then God promises. I said I would do it. I said I would do it. Is God a man? No. Is God a liar? No. When he speaks, he brings it to pass. Yes. That's what God does. Yes. He's a God of his word. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah 15, 21. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Yes. So God knows that there are wicked people on earth. God knows that there are terrible situations on earth. But he has already given the promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you face the situation, he has already promised you. He said he will deliver you. Amen. Now look at this. I mean, listen to this. As born again children of God, we don't look for miserable sympathizers. Everybody go through troubles and trials. Don't carry it on your forehead. What? You are a child of God. And he said he would deliver you. Amen. You hold to that promise. And walk toward praising the Lord. Amen. The fire is burning, but the bush shall not be consumed. Amen. Because God cannot fail. Amen. He cannot fail. Now coming to the object lesson of David in, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. We have, done, we have studied this in our Sunday school lessons uh, you know, recently, verses 11 to 13. What happened? This shepherd boy, he's just doing his own work, following instruction as the parents ask him to do. But they went to, they sent for him to come. He wasn't asking for position. He wasn't asking for recognition. He wasn't asking for notification. He was just doing as God asked him to do. He was just following the instructions of his parents. Are you following the instruction of your God? You come to the house of God. People are singing. Your mouth is sealed up. Shame. In the house of God. You should open your mouth and sing. Because the song motivates God into action. And then when you move, you, 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 you are not singing. And then you say God does not bless you. You don't seem to praise him. You don't make his head to swell up to help you. And then you say, he doesn't help me. Many times I look at the young people. They have now graduated in their 20s. No job. Have you really known that God is speaking to you? That's your tough time. That's the time you need to look at the promises in the Bible. That is the time you need to sit right. That is the time you need to recognize the calling of God. God is particularly after you. That's why he's making it hard for you. Because on this line, you've got to wake up. You cannot be a child forever. You cannot be fed forever. You have to realize that now you are an adult. This is getting hard now, yeah. Now I need to become an adult now. I need to be praying now. I need to be singing in the church now. I need to be doing everything of God now. Why? David was doing that. They didn't ask him to come home. He didn't, when they are doing some important thing, David is not there. He's in the bush. He's in the field. He's looking after the sheep, putting his life down for animal. What are you doing? Are you doing anything for that Lord? You sit down there, looking at these old people. See the way they sing. See the way they preach. See their grammar. That means when we are recognizing that it's time for you to get up and fill the gap. Do what David was doing. You realize that he was in the field. But because he's faithful there, God is taking him out of there. If you are faithful in your corner, God will take you up. God cannot fail. If you are not saved, my word may not get into your head. It might look too harsh. 
It might look too unreasonable. But when you are saved, yeah, things begin to sink into your head. That is true. God is calling me. God is talking to me. When you are sanctified, you get united with the word of God. As the Bible quotation is made, you get your pen, you start to erase. Ah, this promise is for me. Yeah, you underline it. Something starts to prick in your heart. This is for me. Because God is a spirit. And they that serve him, they serve in a spirit. And in truth, don't wait to see God like you are seeing me. You will only see God in the world that is coming up. In the song that the choir is singing. In the congregational song. Even in the prayer, some people pray beside you. That's how you know that is God talking to you. And when you pick it that way, let the storm come. Let the trial come. You will be smiling. Amen. You will be on the flood of trouble. You will walk afloat. You will not sink. Amen. And you will not look for miserable sympathizers. You only look to God. You and God have a deal. If he's not well with you, it is God. It is you and God. Straighten up. Straighten up with God. And God will straighten up with you. Even some people who are really children of God. They still go through hard time. Why? Because God wants them to pray. God wants them to look at his promises. That God cannot fail. That God has never failed. And he won't fail you. Do you realize something? In 2 Samuel chapter 5, I read it. Fast, fast 4. David became a king at the age of 30. Listen to that. So from his age of 20, when he was anointed, up to the age of 30, what was he going through? Problem. Young people, are you not in that age? Are you not facing difficulty? That's the time God is testing you. You are between 20 and 30, and you are finding it hard. That's God talking to you. David did not ask to be king. David did not ask to be anointed. David did not ask for any promise at all. He was just doing what he has to do. But they called him to the house. And they put oil upon his head. And they said, you are anointed as king. But was he king yet? For 10 years. Brethren, let's reason. It was God who anointed him, isn't it? But for 10 years, he's far away from the throne. God has promised you he will do something for you. How many years have not been there? Did David give up? No. Will you give up? No. Some of us, I remember very well. <clears throat> when I was learning how to drive, the devil is like, um, actually, it's not learning. I've been driving for more than 10 years in my country before I came here. But when I came here, I wouldn't pass. And I do it again, and I do it again, I wouldn't pass. I didn't compare myself with somebody. He did the test one time, he passed. He did the test three times, he passed. That's not my own. I'm dealing with myself. I don't look at the time. I don't count. All I know is I must pass the driving test. Yes, That's my own principle. I don't count. I am not John. I'm not Janet. I'm not Elizabeth. I am Michael. So my own is that I need my driving license. I forget the time, how many times I do the test. I lose the counting. All I know is that I must pass. And you know what I passed? I don't want to tell you how many times. But you know one thing I discovered? The area they fail me is when I'm reversing to park. Or when I'm going by reverse. You know what happened? I can go in the same speed when I'm in the front as well as when I'm doing reverse. That becomes my strong point. Even when I'm conveniently comfortable to park by reverse than the front. But that was where they were failing me. Brethren, do you bring that to your life? That area of your difficulty, that's where God wants you to be stronger. That's where God wants you to be stronger. He doesn't want you to chicken out, as they say. He doesn't want you to feel like, oh, the whole world is on my head. It's on everybody's head. So you are not different. Open your eyes. Wake up. Stand still. Sit right. Serve the Lord. And he will do what? He will deliver you. Because God does not fail. This life can fail us in many ways. But God will never fail us. Yes. Marriages, you might fail. You might not get what you want in marriages. You know what some of us look at young people is that, you know, you just hold your husband and wife, you just working together, you just like it like that. <laughs> so marriages, they can't hold together. 
It's not that they are really worth that much. It's either the man is working faster or the wife is working faster. And the other one is just trying to manage, to follow. And then how many times will he be holding that hand? That's one thing. They didn't pray for that. But it happens. As it's happened to the children of God, so it happens to the people of the world. I thought I was having a problem at work one time when I was in Bristol. But when one lady came to me and she was narrated her story, I was like, what? She wasn't a child of God. She smoked like anything. But the point is that the way she bears everything as if nothing happens. Then I said to myself, this is somebody who doesn't know Jesus. What of me who knows Jesus? Why should I carry my problem on my head? The Lord is my strength. Amen. The Lord is your strength. Amen. The Lord is your strength. Amen. There are some corporate problems that affect everybody. It means everybody should pray. That's what it means. When we have an issue that affects everybody, it means everybody should pray. We should wake up. We have a God that can never fail. Let us stand by his promises. When the world is going haywire, as they say, then you stand firm. You stand. Later they will say, wow. So you are going through all this? I remember one time I was in a camp meeting in Portland, Oregon, and a brother came from wherever. And he came to see me. He said, Michael, you are still in this church? I said, what a question. He said, with all that you are going through, I said, what am I going through? So you can still serve God. He said, I purposely came to this community because of you. I can't believe you can still be in this church. I said, what? Everybody have their problem. If you open yours and I open mine, we go nowhere. But that is why we have the altar. That is why we have the altar. The place to present all our episode of life. Where God and God alone listen. And he listen with all his mind and attend to our need. No matter how awful we ask him, he's never bored. He's never discouraged. He's never tired. So it's only our duty now to ask. You know one portion I read in the Bible that was like, what? He said, he that to ask you, not ask me anything. He said, ask that your joy may be full. I said, wow. So this is in the Bible. So I have not asked anything. So all that I've been asking all this time is, any, is I have not asked anything. Brethren, that's for us. You have not really asked God something. He said, ask and your joy shall be You know, if we can do it this way, know that A have problem, B have problem, but you know that you and God have the deal. God knows what he's doing. Because I look at the life of David. From age of 20, he was anointed. And then he started running. He became a fugitive. Somebody that had been anointed a king. If it is you, what will you say? I don't think that is God actually. Where is that prophet Samuel said, who anointed me? He must be a fake prophet. When the people of God preach, don't you say that? That one call himself a man of God. Eh? Look at what he's saying. The word is for you. David didn't look at uh, what has happened that he has been anointed. He was steadfast with God. Yeah. He was faithful with God. He was consistent with God. He never has been found wanting. How many times do you come to church? When you come in the morning, say our pastor was announced, he's like begging you to come in the evening. It's for your own good though. Why don't you even sleep in the house of God? Sammy said that, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell. And I shall dwell. You don't like to dwell in the house of God. May death will not take you to his own house. If you don't cling to Jesus, the devil will hold you. Get a hold of Jesus. So when the devil wants to keep you back, you ask this one is in the, 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 the hotel. He will leave you alone. But when you are wondering about the time to come to the house of God, you're wondering about, you're watching screen, watching football, watching all those other people of the world. When the devil will just give you a slap, headache will just start. From headache is eye ache. From eye ache is shoulder ache. From shoulder ache is my tummy. Because you are in the wrong place. Be in the house of God, morning, noon, and night, where you can. The more we are together, the what? The happier we shall be. God has given you promises, He will not fail you. Because God cannot fail. God promised David. But for 10 years, that promise didn't come. If David was not steadfast, will he ever become a king? If you are not steadfast, that goal might be hard for you to achieve. You are a child of God. 
You are a peculiar person. Even to be under this message today, you are a special child of God. Either you are saved or not. Take it for me. You are a special child of God. And that situation we are going through is because Jesus, God, he loves you. That is why he's hard on you. And he wants you to be a prayerful warrior. Don't relent. Don't retard. Fight on. God is on your side. He cannot fail. And do anything you find your hands doing. Do it for the Lord. Don't be found wanting. Don't be found wanting. Somebody said, one of our uh, uh, senior ministers in the law of blessed memory now, he said when his mate was learning piano music and everything, he, he couldn't learn. You know what he come to do? The only time they are doing practice on Sunday afternoon, like you will see many, many of our missus students doing, yeah? He will take some duster and cleaning the, the, wings, the what do you call it, railings and the windows. Nobody ask him. He just wants the house of God to be clean. From there he become usher, he become pastor, he become overseer, evangelical. If you keep yourself doing something, don't be idle, wandering about the road, wandering about the street when the house of God is there. If you have nowhere to go, stay in the house of God. Yes. Keep on praying. Even if you cannot pray, the fact that you are in the house of God, you are under the umbrella of the security of the Lord God. He has personally dedicated the day, one day, from all the days of the week, for you to serve him. He knows you are going to have trouble, brethren. God knows that, and he wants to help you. Uh, in Joshua 21, 45, another promise. Joshua 21, 45. There failed not out of any good thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel, all came to pass. Every promise that God has promised you will come to pass. Amen. Some of us dream, God want me to do something. God want me to do music instruments. God want me to become a choir. And then you do it a little bit and you, you, weaken, you weaken out. Don't. If it is in your dream, if it is your trance, wherever it comes from, God has spoken to you. Stand firm. Even when you don't know anything, stand firm. I become an organist by grace. I don't know anything. I'm not good like, like others. Many people learn the music and everything within six, eight months. I did my own for three years. But I did it. That's the point. That's the point. And I can do it and I can praise God with it. And I can enjoy myself singing. Amen. Whatever you are going through, God cannot fail you. Amen. We have individual issue. Pray about it. Yeah. We have corporate problem. Let's join our mind and so together. Our brother, little boy who is sick. God will raise him up. Amen. That's a corporate prayer. We need to take it to God every time. God will raise him up. Yeah. And will be a living witness to the power of God. Yeah. In Lamentation, the last one I think I'll take. Three. Lamentation 3.22, it says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. See it, my soul. Therefore, I will I open him. Amen. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, Amen. to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should bo both hope and, and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. So the action point is this. David didn't complain or blame God. Don't complain. Don't blame. David always pray for, for forgiveness. Check yourself. And once you are clear, your prayer will be answered. Amen. David was always busy gathering followers. Even in the time of trouble. In your trouble time, rise up to help other people. Don't think because you have trouble. You can still help somebody whose trouble is terrible more than your own. He was always seek the mind of God. You need to seek God for your salvation. Make sure it's there. For your sanctification. For your baptism with Holy Spirit. Make sure this presence of God is with you. David always worship God. Don't be found one thing. Come to church morning, noon, and night. Anytime they announce church service, come there. God will meet up with you one day. In Hebrews 4.16, it's a call for all of us. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We need to come boldly to God. He is a God who promise, and he cannot fail. God will not fail you. As we are singing, God cannot uh, fail. God can do anything. Let us come and pray. Let us come to the altar, and God will bless you. So,
Lord, we thank you. We thank you because you cannot fail. Help us to learn from David that anything, whatever happens, he will run to the house of God. Whatever happens, God is his succor. Help us, O Lord, to seek your mind all the time. To surrender to your will. To wait for you. And trust you forever. We know you will not fail. Bless us and make us a blessing. Save souls, O Lord. Sanctify. Baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Heal all our diseases. Both who are here and those who are at home. Heal every one of us. Let us go home rejoicing. In Jesus' mighty name.